Welcome to Marsha's Plate, a black trans inclusive feminist podcast. A place where we know that not everybody is invited to the cookout. And we also know that every single day is a brand new day and we have the power to make a difference today. So let's do this. New day, brand new day, make it better than yesterday. You can always find a way to turn it all around again. It's a new day, brand new day, make it better than yesterday. You can always find a way to start over again. With the sunrise, you can start over again. You can make it better than yesterday. It's a new day. It's a new day. New day. There's a way. You can turn it around. Trust me. There's a way out. There's more time. Just don't give up. When the sun rises on a new day, you got another chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. A new day. A new day. You got another chance. If you want to join the conversation, you can hashtag Marsha's Plate. You can follow us on most social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that. Just search for Marsha's Plate, M-A-R-S-H-A-S-P-L-A-T-E. Y'all ready? Let's get started. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, hey, hey. hey. Peace. Oh, listen, y'all can hear me today. <laughs> <Not much better. laughs> I wasn't going to say that thing, but if, if you insist. My bad, y'all. Better. You know, my analog ways, but you know, we're trying to, trying to get better. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> yeah. The elephant in the room, honey. Was like, what did you say? Day, honey. Mm-hmm. Oh, so what's going on with y'all this week? I've been doing good. Child, honey, this week, y'all, I did a, a video for Biden and Trump's their uh, views on electric vehicles. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I'm surprised that we're still having this conversation. I saw a press release of Trump essentially saying that he didn't support the electric vehicle movement. You know, everybody. Why? What everybody is have a gas guzzler. You have a gas guzzler. You have a gas guzzler. And so I'm like, oh, my God, is this really a thing? Like, don't we know that climate change and global warming and greenhouse gases are really a thing? So as I'm doing my video, I'm researching and I'm looking around and I see just as many sources saying that climate change doesn't exist as there are sources verifying that it does exist. Mm -hmm. And of course, these aren't reputable sources who are saying that climate change isn't a thing, but... I know that for the layperson who doesn't research for a living, it could get really confusing, you know, and you could really easily get bamboozled into thinking that natural disaster doesn't exist and, you know, eradication of the human race is not a real thing. It's just propaganda. And it's like, oh, oh, my God, like, am I am I crazy? Climate change is really a thing, right? Of course. Well, yeah, of course, climate change is really a thing. <laughs> and, 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 and of course, you know, Jerry Farwell and all them people started Liberty University in the, in the you know, back more recently, right? And all these different colleges and stuff to make it seem like stuff is reputable and do think tanks for conservatives. So you got Randy, you know, they, they've been playing the long game. They've been playing the long game. <laughs> with some and of I that see it. Too, and it's, it's crazy because yeah. people genuinely believe in that you know that that we have nothing to worry about that um that carbon does that that burning carbon and um heating up our <sighs> atmosphere is not a real thing i just don't know how people can feel that way now when like everybody every region of this country has went through some kind of major climate disaster, disaster in mm-hmm. some kind of way that it's not normal like i feel like there's pr- Proper people in Texas that are like this shit is real than they used to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? After having y'all snowstorms and your shit shut down, I'm not saying it converted everybody to reality, but I I just I feel like some people it's gotta be connected for some people. You know, um, absolutely, I, and that's the same thing. It, yeah, it's like you know, heat waves, snowstorms, floods. Like, come on, y'all. Yeah, there are record heat waves right now, killing people literally. 
Like, yeah. it just, it blows my mind. Like, even here growing up on the East Coast, like, it doesn't really <laughs> snow here in Maryland in the winter anymore. And I remember growing up, we had snow every winter. It was it was a yeah. question of how many times we were going to get it and how many times we were going to get snowed in versus now. It's a question if we'll even see snow that year. I have a question for you, Bree. When it comes to that, like, Wisconsin is kind of similar. Like, it doesn't snow as much as it used to. And but instead of having like snow days, sometimes they'll have like it's fucking cold days. Like it'll be like below like the it would just be like so cold that they have to cancel school versus like a snow day. Is the is it getting colder there in the winter, even though it's not snowing? Um, it is it's definitely cold, but no, it's it's not it's not getting colder here either. Where it's we have been experiencing um record low, I mean record high temperatures in the winter over these past mm. couple years it's, it's not as cold here and and no we've never i've never known of a school cancellation because of sub-zero temperatures that's been oh it. yeah yeah no they've been doing that now because it'll be like i mean you know it'll be like negative it'll be like 10 degrees but the wind chill factor will make it feel oh, like baby. it's negative I, like 20 or something i live so, in houston i live in houston baby i know we, you live in houston we get 20 degrees baby <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. Twenty degrees. Yes. Wow. Wow. We, well, it's because we don't have the infrastructure to deal with freezing, like rain or oh. ice and stuff like that. We mm-hmm. don't have the mm-hmm. salt trucks to come out. We don't. You, I got just, you. like people yeah. in, like Maryland or something. But people in, up there, y'all have snow on a regular basis in the winter time, so y'all have that kind of infrastructure to do that. We don't have that at all. Like I, it's probably snowed since the freeze, that crazy ass freeze in um twenty twenty one. It probably has snow once, and it didn't. And it oh. didn't last till the next morning. When the sun came out, the next morning it was gone. Yeah, so, yeah, that's how snow out here too. No, like that at all. <laughs> so it rarely gets under thirty here. It mm. rarely gets. So when it gets to twenty, baby, the the children stay home. What what is what's the winter temperature like out there? Yeah, it rarely gets under thirty. I like guess usually around if it's like in, in you'll get like maybe two, three weeks of late January, early February. That's going to be in the 40s, 50s, like mm. like that. But y- you you mm. never get in like super low. It, 20 is crazy for us. 20 is cold. <laughs> Wow. So wow. we, we rarely. Well, I guess it's kind of like here too, like in Seattle. Uh, like if you go further north, it gets cold. It, like it real snow, but like in Seattle, winter goes to like maybe thirty. Like they don't really get below freezing, so they'll get in the thirties. It'll be like thirty. You know, this year got to twenty eight, twenty seven, and it was and it, it was not normal. You know what I'm saying? I was like, well, shit, this I could do this back in Wisconsin. Like <laughs> that's that ice freeze cold. You know what I mean? Where you really feeling in your bones? But yeah, it's kind of nice. I don't mind the winter here. Honestly, it's an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, I don't know winter weather. weather-wise. <laughs> that's that's interesting being in Seattle, being in Washington. Yeah. I heard that um they they just passed a bill uh or passed a law there where they have to include um LGBTQ plus uh, yeah. in curricula, in school curricula. Yes. They did pass shout out to Wisconsin. Like uh, Wisconsin, well, not Wisconsin, to Washington State <laughs> legislature okay. and Governor Isley. Uh, for signing that yeah um yeah they just passed some legislation where yeah they're gonna they're like yeah we gotta include lgbt folks in school curriculum you know you had a little flare-up but it's it wasn't you know they're like all right (laughs) (laughs) which is good because they're trying to combat what's happening everywhere else so they're just like let's just get on the front end of this you know uh washington state's a quote sanctuary uh state i believe and i know seattle's a sanctuary city for trans folks um and all that kind of stuff. So like that's a norm. That's a like the community here is even when you watch the news, like they don't really even frame it like, oh, this is controversial. Oh, the deal. And once the you know, like, cause it's like, yes, of course, gay people are humans. Of course, trans people are humans. They're not political issues. We're people. Like, so that's kind of how you know stuff kind of gets talked here. And it definitely makes a difference in terms of like the tone of conversations. Let me let me add this to the conversation because I went on the website too because I didn't know we were going to talk about this. But I, while we were t- while y'all was discussing, it, I went on the White House government's website. They said that they're talking about 
Biden's plan in regards to um, reducing, well, kind of rolling back the effects of climate change. And mm. Congress, I, I did read about this. Congress just passed the Inflation Reduction Act, and it is the most mm. important legislation in U.S. history to tackle climate crisis and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law Act. Together, these bills are saving family hundreds of dollars per year on energy bills. They're creating millions of good paying jobs for American workers through clean energy manufacturing, strengthening our resilience to um, to extreme um, weather events and delivering clean air and water to our children and grandchildren. Um, the administration has taken hundreds of executive actions to restore protection for the environment of public health, strengthen pollution standards, and advance environmental justice and protection for over 21 million acres of public land and water, with Biden on track to conserve more areas than any president in history. So Biden is doing his part in maybe not enough, but doing more than previous administrations. And so, and not just previous, talking about Trump, previous even before him. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's really kind of doing it's more things so make sure you check it out it is um the presidential the um president biden's historic climate agenda check that out on the website and we i will put the link in the show notes and yeah i just wanted to share that and so yeah i think that it's crazy that this is an election year biden is clearly running to try and um remain in office and we have to research to learn the, the positive things that the Biden administration is doing. Yeah, they definitely need to do a better job about being more vocal about the victories and stuff that they do. Um, and I think they're trying, I can I can see how they're trying to get better about it a little bit in certain ways. Well, I 100% agree on that. Like y'all need to get a little louder because the internet is a, is, is a bigger seat. So it's not easy. In the same way, you know, and then you got so many trolls, you know, I mean, like this is kind of we're dealing with a whole thing about this election. So people are getting up the Internet algorithms. You're not going to find it as easily as you may have been able to find uh, certain information in the past, too. So, yeah, yeah. I also be diligent. I think I don't I don't want anybody to be um, lazy about getting information. I literally just Googled. And it was a, a few links. I'm not saying that every fucking link you find is going to be blah, blah, blah. But that be diligent and um, mm -hmm. at least try to look up some of the facts. And mm -hmm. um, when it comes to what you care about and you, and you don't have to look up everything, just issues that you care about. Bree just brought up climate change. She cared. She's did some research on climate change. You, you that might not be your core um issue it could be something right. else it could be reproductive justice it could be housing insecurity it could be how, how your city is dealing with um homelessness and what um affects biden's administration has affect has has impacted on that whatever your issue is you got to be diligent in finding information out for yourself and don't just don't just and i say that because it's tons of ways that you can get information but don't just rely on your favorite news source to give you um, the information. Go to multiple things. Do that. Be diligent about it. Uh, President Biden uh, once again uh, declared the proclamation for a Trans Day of Visibility this year. Um, he said he want to honor the extraordinary courage and confirm our nation's commitment to forming a more perfect union where all people are created equal. Blah 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 blah. blah. He said proudly, administration has stood for justice for the community. Blah blah blah. Anyway. I don't know if y'all know, but that was March 31st. <laughs> and it also so happened to be Easter Sunday uh, mm -hmm. in the, what do they call it? The heterodox or something calendar. Cause today, Monday is Easter in the Orthodox calendar. Um, and so there are a lot of people, a lot of trolls, a lot of conservatives on the internet. How dare you? How dare you? You know what I'm saying? Be blasphemous and sacrilegious on the day that Jesus rose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, just like you, just like He's you said. People, so. right? Oh my goodness, Tyrese said, going through him a breakdown. Tyrese even was in. Tyrese did a breakdown over this shit. Oh yeah. Lord, have mercy. Tyrese Lord, have mercy. Me? No, Tyrese the singer. The singer, like sweet lady. Oh, should be like. What happened, Donnie? Shorty, 
What happened? Yo, he just I, was he crying and shit? Not crying, but, but, but basically. basically. <laughs> but he, he basically was saying the bullshit. Basically, uh, educate me. Why is this relevant? And why? Oh, Lord, I'm not da, 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 da. You, Why do we need to educate you on how dates and times coincide? This, right, exactly. The fact, is the, he still on yeah. the internet? I can't figure out. I am a, I am a content no. creator, and I'm trying to figure out how many hours in the day does this nigga had. This nigga didn't been able to get married, get divorced, have a new girlfriend, <laughs> and spend more time on Damn. the internet to three uh, Fast and Furious movies, and he still spends more time Ooh. on the internet than me. I, <laughs> I don't know what kind of black magic that nigga got up over there, but I want him to use it to try and conjure some common sense. Uh, Yo, and not worry we'll about us. Trans Day Visibility has been celebrated on March 31st since 2009. First of all, Easter didn't usually end up being in March in the first fucking place. So go on somewhere with this shit. Like, I don't even know why Easter. Yeah, it's rarely in March. Right. In the first fucking place. So it's like, come on, y'all. <laughs> the day shouldn't even our our day shouldn't even matter. Like the people who are even having mm-hmm. conversations and even brought this up as an issue, as a topic. <laughs> there are people who don't even have the common sense to be able to understand the difference between a holiday being on a day and a holiday being on a date. Right. Break it down for a break, break it down for a Oh, well, let me break it down for the people in the back. You know <laughs> I'm used to talking day, to the saying. people in the back of the Real class. Talk. Honey, if you in the back of the class, baby, like Thanksgiving. Easter is one of those holidays that is celebrated on a day, meaning a day of the week. You know, for example, Easter is a Sunday. Trans Day of Visibility is celebrated on the 31st. You know, like Christmas is on the 25th. Every single year. Every single year. There are going to be occasions Mm -hmm. where two holidays are going to happen on the same day, especially now in capitalist America, where every other day is a damn holiday. But y'all got y'all holidays, honey. If you don't stay your ass in the back of the class and let us have our goddamn holidays. Y'all don't make me cuss y'all out. Y'all, y'all know I find IP addresses and read y'all and stuff. Don't don't do that, honey. Focus on what's important, honey. This damn election. No, yeah. not Diddy. The damn election. Why, why Easter falls on in the way that it falls is because it is based on the moon. It is not based on the date. It is based on the moon. They put it in that rotation so that it will never coincide with Passover. It's always going to be just in time. (laughs) It is based on the moon cycle. And so because that is a case, it is going to switch different days in every April. Sometimes it's going to fall in March, but usually it's going to be April. So get y'all Christian panties out of a bunch. (laughs) <laughs> y'all will be okay Easter you shouldn't even be worried about T Dove you should be worried about your bunnies and your um, the resurrection and your communion and your wine and your little stale crackers you should be worried about your stuff and make sure that y'all worried about are y'all living Christ like like are y'all showing the compassion to yeah, your yeah. neighbor are, y'all, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing in regards to your religion? That's it right there. <laughs> how you, right how there. you are navigating the world. How you, how you treat people. people. Right. How you treat people. How you how you show compassion. How you show mercy. How you treat Palestinians. How, how you do you treat, treat your neighbors? Your neighbors. How you treat right. your um trans um your poor folks, your, mm-hmm. your um, unhoused folks. How you treat... Are you treating people like Jesus would treat the marginalized? Because Jesus rolled with the marginalized. That's what, that's what, you know, Period. technically Jesus was a criminal. You know what I'm saying? Mary Mag. Right. And the state killed him. So y'all blue lives matter, motherfuckers. The state killed Jesus. It wasn't <laughs> the sinners. <laughs> so anyway, mm-hmm. pay attention. Anyway, tell us what y'all. <laughs> the government. <laughs> uh, the government. <laughs> Tell us what y'all think about this Easter foolishness. Tell us what y'all think about climate change. And th- tell us what y'all think about Biden's um, more aggressive <laughs> plan and strategy to fight against climate change. Hashtag March's Plate.
Oh my God, I want to thank all of our new patrons this week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay, 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 yay. So not only are you helping to sustain this particular podcast, you know, I also donate to other podcasts. I donate to other organizations. I have my finger on the post of the community and I know a lot of grassroots organizations that are doing great work out here so you're not only helping to sustain us you're helping to sustain other people in a community because I put my money where my mouth is you know that's just the kind of bitch I am community is fuck <laughs> so thank you I really really appreciate you and if you have not become a patron why have you not? You can donate as low as a dollar a month. It doesn't matter. Anything helps. Please. Do I have to play Sarah McLaughlin and show you puppies? Like, what do I have to do? Do I have to do resort to what the white people do to get you to give them money? <laughs> All righty. Anyway, thank y'all. And the Patreon and PayPal link is at the bottom. Back to the show. Hey everybody, this is a trigger warning. We are going to discuss the documentary Quiet on the Set and there are some themes of sexual assault and molestation and stuff like that in the discussion of conversation. And so, yeah, we wanted to give, make sure y'all had a warning to know that that is what we are about to discuss. All right, y'all. So I have been watching a lot of television. And one thing that I had a great time watching and brought some nostalgia back and some like ooh creepy vibes, too. I watched a documentary <laughs> called Quiet on the Set. Have y'all watched that? Yeah, mm. I have. Uh, I have a chance to watch it. So it is a documentary about Nickelodeon in its heyday in the 90s and early 2000s. Okay. And about, I think his name is Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder. Yes, Dan Snyder and a couple of other um, Nickelodeon execs. And mm. it goes into the history of Nickelodeon coming to rise, but it also goes into how it was a breeding farm of fucking pedophiles. Wow. So many pedophiles was behind the scenes. I wasn't there like three or four. A lot there of misogyny. There were there were four uh, pedophiles altogether who were um, showcased, but all of that wasn't shown in the documentary. But we'll get to that. Yes, and so it did amazing interviews with parents of the children who auditioned for. Um, some of the parts, it did amazing interviews with some of the stars of Nickelodeon and like all that. And um, just anybody who was connected to the that era in time in television, they really got a bunch of interviews. And I thought that they did amazing in regards to that. And so I wanted to ask y'all, why is it when... These white boys are so obviously being fucking weird. There was a scene in this children's show where they kept on showing Ariana Grande, Ariana Grande of them squirting stuff on her face, squirting stuff on her chest, and her doing these very, very sexual, suggestive, yeah. suggestive Things, but she wasn't the only one. It was some of the boys like jacking off pickles and and I'm talking about crazy. There was the pickle, there was the pickle guy, pickle boy, or whatever. Yeah. It was it was a, just a reoccurring multiple, not just one. It's multiple reoccurring, perverted, sexualized, like shit squirting on the little girl's feet. And these are all children that they were doing. Now, this can thing. I can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Were those from the nineties or were those more from the like two thousands? All throughout. That was the whole, the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, they yeah, were yeah. doing multiple things. Mm -hmm. um, multiple things with multiple um multiple characters and multiple actors. Um one of the characters looked like he had penis penis balls, penis and balls on his shoulder. It was, it just was a bunch of innuendo and a bunch of suggestive shit. That's wild. It pouring in their mouths and just doing all these kind of really crazy things. That's so disgusting. much so that people were like, 
uh, this is getting kind of weird. And it was so obviously weird that multiple people were saying something about it, but people were just going with the punches. And I just yeah. don't understand why. I guess my question is, why do y'all think that is? Like, why when shit is, why do we have to have wait 20 years with all this this clear hinting stuff for us to get the fucking picture that some some of this shit is fucking weird and it's obvious that they are fucking creeps. Why do you think it takes so long other than the money? Is there, of course, they're making money, but is there, do y'all think it's another reason? I mean, Amazing. sexual harassment wasn't illegal until like the 80s. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's a big part of it. Like all this shit in terms of, you can't rape women. You can't sexually assault people at work. You can't harass. All that's relatively new, you know. And so I think that that's a big part of it. For and out to Anita Hill in for, the early nineties. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, that was new, and people still, you know, you still regularly are sexually harassed at work, particularly if you're a woman, right? And you're a cis woman or a cis assumed woman, right? And so, and it, you know what I'm saying? So, and even if you're not a sister some woman, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's so prevalent. <laughs> Praying on kids, all that kind of stuff. Like, I think that, yeah, I think, I mean, the fact that laws are recent. <laughs> to, to be like, it's just a problem. <laughs> you and know what I'm saying? Just the parents, to, like, how pervasive it is. And then you think, if you think about because people assume that the parents are involved because this is children, they had to sign releases, and that the, there was parents who were on the set, because if there was one black mom that was on in the interview, and she was like, this literally kind of put a splinter in me and my son's relationship, because her complaining about stuff, yeah, her son was like, Oh, maybe my mom got me fired from this job, even though I think it's kind of weird and strange. I uh, my mom got me fired from this job because she was complaining about the weird and strange shit, but I still wanted to yeah. work. So it put a damper in their relationship that they look back differently now, hindsight, but yeah, in the moment he was kind of judging his mom. I I have two points to make just on just on that that subject alone. Well, Nickelodeon specifically and and inquired on on set. They exposed uh, Brian Peck, they exposed Dan Schneider, and they exposed Jason Hansey. Jason Hansey is the one who's least talks about. Jason Hansey is actually the one who, um, outside of Brian Peck, has actually done jail time for his sex crimes against he's the, the girl. He's the one that sent the little girl um, new pictures and, his mama, and her mama saw it. He is the one who sent. What? He is the one who sent that child nudes through email. This was before yeah. social media. Yeah. He sent that child nudes through email. Um, he also visited her. Um, was alone. Was alone in her room. And uh, no, I'm sorry. Another another little girl. Uh, yeah. They talked about in the documentary who um, her family didn't want to be shown or anything. But um, Jason actually did time for being alone in the room with the girl and performing Thank sexual you. act with her sexual intimate acts with a little girl who was even younger. If I'm not mistaken, she was around nine, I believe wow. was reported age nine or younger. Um, and, and so, yeah, but quiet on set didn't even bring up all of the convicted child molesters and, and pedophiles that had worked at Nickelodeon. They didn't bring up Cody Longo. Feel free to do your research on him. They didn't bring up Ezel, Ezel Channel. Feel free to do your research on him. And even though we saw Drake Bell in the documentary, they didn't talk about Drake Bell's own sex crimes. He is also a sex offender and an accused pedophile. Um, well, convicted pedophile. Um, yeah, no, no accusation. But he's only been caught um, with child pornography and sharing um, nudes. With right. pe with people under under the age of eighteen. Who Drake Bell, the one that was molested. Drake Bell, the one Drake Bell was molested by Brian Peck, and now he he has become a predator himself. I didn't even hear that about him. Yes, yes, ma'am. I was a fan of Drake and Josh growing up. I was a fan of of Nickelodeon. 
pretty much all those shows and all those Nick stars, honey, those were the white kids that I watched when I wasn't watching TRL or 106 and Park. I've kept up with these stories even before this came a thing. And honey, Disney, y'all better watch out. They say they're coming for y'all next, honey, especially the cast of that. So Raven, I think we we know why people get away with this. The same reason why um, R. Kelly was able to get away with it. Um, money, power, respect, fame. All, all of these things. Patriarchy, sexist, <laughs> all of misogyny. People are willing to look the other way. People are naive. People are sometimes blinded by money, fame, and success. Um, and yeah, uh, there are some people who don't think on that wavelength, so they would never imagine that they're taking their child to work to be raped or molested or groomed or assaulted. This documentary, Jay, is because it traumatized me. Um, but... It opened up a wound and it helped me to realize something that I had never realized and that I had been molested as a child. And this was something that I had completely buried in my mind and I had buried in my brain and I had um, normalized it and I was in denial about it. But for whatever reason, um, seeing this on camera, seeing this on film, seeing this on TV, the associations with Nickelodeon and Probably my childhood and, and my past. Yeah, I'm I'm in the process now of processing all of those things. Um, it was a bit different for me because I was molested by other other children. One of my family members of my generation was molested, and that spun into a, a whole cycle of my whole entire generation and my family being molested. Sorry to hear that. Sorry. Yeah. Just on the law thing, uh, you know, uh, it really wasn't, they didn't really have a big law around rape until 1975. So it's like even the concept that rape, rape is illegal is new for particularly, you say, baby boomer generation. Those people are already in their 20s and their 30s. You get what I'm saying? So like this, mm -hmm. like it's all relatively, we still adjust into, like we, I think we probably, millennials are probably the first generation to grow up where sexual harassment and rape was illegal. But also looking at the programs, I remember as a kid, the change, as a young person, the change on Nickelodeon, because I watched Nickelodeon like Doug, Rugrats, all that stuff. And I remember I watched Roundhouse Variety Show. But I remember when all that came on, there were times where I was like, oh, no, this is like grossing me the fuck out. And I remember just some of the shifts personally, just remember like with the program and then kind of just pulling away from Nickelodeon. I mean, I was getting older, too, but just like. But some it was like gross to me. I was like, what the fuck? Like <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I remember that the the switch as well, but I just I just felt like I was getting older. Like once it got in the two thousands, I was in college and shit. So I was like, I wouldn't think about no damn Nickelodeon. <laughs> in the nineties. What was dope about the nineties for me during that time and what I was super, super worried about when watching it. <sighs> Is I loved me some Double Dare and Mark Summers. Oh, yes, I, Double Dare. I, I thought they was about to say Mark Summers was been less than the kids, and I would have been mad. No, they got they probably got Mark's ass up out of there because he was ready to tell on them people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, there was a shift though. Because did, did you watch um, Roundhouse? I love Double Dare. I love. I actually liked all that. The first, the first round, I like because they brought exactly. It, but yeah. I love, with Keenan and Kel and the yeah. young um, Amanda Bynes when she was like, when she was in the, the little angry little girl, I thought that was funny. I mm -hmm. love Lydia, the big girl, because it was representative of a plus size girl and mm -hmm. she was funny. Um, I just I just thought the early all that was fun. But by the time mm -hmm. I did, by the time we get to the 2000s, I wasn't watching Nickelodeon no more. Did you do uh, Clarissa Explains It All? I remember watching that one. Oh, that, was, mm -hmm. that was when Melissa Joan Hart became my best. But um, <laughs> but no, um, a, another side note, something that I don't think they brought up in quiet on set, uh, Britney Spears' sister, uh, Jamie. Uh, yeah, Jamie Lynn, um, you know, she plays Zoe. You know, they gave her a show, it was Zoe 101, and then you remember she got pregnant and she disappeared. Well, not sure if y'all remember that because, you know, I was a little bit younger than y'all. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, she ended up getting pregnant, having to leave the show because she was, you know, under 18 and it looked bad for the brand. Well, apparently, honey, the baby daddy was one of the producers on Zoe 101. Wow. 
And that was something that they kept under wraps, but just slowly sh- but surely it came out over over time. I just feel like so there were so many red flags that I feel like nowadays, like we gotta make sure when we're when we are seeing these red flags, we call the motherfuckers out because yeah. I hate that we're coming 20 years later. That wasn't that long ago. I kind of I don't want to say based on what um Jay was just talking about all those kind of the lack of protection that people were having in the 70s and the 80s. I don't want to say I understand it like it's any kind of justification, but you get what I'm saying? We're coming out of the fucking dark ages. So I understand us un- unraveling some things or uncovering some mm-hmm. things here. But in the early 2000s, we should have been on it. Like, we should have been knowing what was... Nah, the- I mean, Diamond, the early, to me, the early 2000s was still bullshit. Like, still navigating it as, like, a cis black woman. I told you, like, dudes, were like, I had a girlfriend, and they'd be, like, hitting on my girlfriend in front of... Like, certain shit that just would not happen now the level of sexism level of patriarchy the level of shit how many meetings you be in and like god's just taking up space space none of that shit is like acceptable today in the same way none of that shit is acceptable yeah, today. like it's socially there's a social shift right so just like white people in the 90s especially and especially in the 90s were like racism Overt racism, that is socially unacceptable. We are, you know what I mean? Like today, the if you're overtly sexist, it's not acceptable in the same way socially that it, it, it used to be. So I think that's uh I think some I mean I'm not saying it completely, obviously, we know that, but you know what I'm saying? You know, the norms have changed, which is great. Like that's I think that is positive. Not as much as we need to, but the shit is very different. <laughs> like yeah. in my in my for my lived experience, my high statement should. So tell me what y'all thought about the documentary and uh, and just all of, just the whole Nickelodeon something. If you watch the documentary, tell me what were some of the standout things for y'all. Um, yeah, hashtag March's plate. The shit was weird. <laughs> <laughs> So I have been, you know, just just doing my trans thing, Googling, looking for trans topics, seeing what's going on in trans news, trans politics, all the things. So go down the rabbit hole, end up looking at various current trans ads, you know, um, marketing campaigns that that various trans models have. Um, looking at uh, trans-inclusive or trans-specified marketing and promotion campaigns. Look, of course, you know, looking into the propaganda of it all, you know, because, baby, a lot of marketing, advertising, and promotion is nothing more than propaganda. But anyway, I noticed a shift in the culture of trans visibility when it comes to selling things to the public. COVID shut down, COVID lockdown, and and of course we could go back even further than that, but you know I I, I don't want to get too too deep into it because I want to talk more current during the COVID lockdown. I I noticed that there was a lot more trans inclusivity. I was seeing um a lot of trans models that I knew they were starting to get more mainstream jobs. They were um, being put on commercials that I was actually seeing without having to go and go and look for, um, you know, and it wasn't even always a thing where they were visibly trans in these marketing and in these ads. It just was very trans inclusive, like we giving the girls jobs. But of course, during the COVID lockdown, I, all, I also noticed the shift where there was more trans visibility in marketing and advertisement. There were uh, mainstream campaigns from pe- from people like Nike, um, you know, even more recently, Bud Light with, with Dylan Mulvaney. It, it was a lot more of that. I've noticed the shift going from trans people being included in commercial marketing pa- campaigns to I'm seeing the trans models and I'm seeing the trans faces back in activism and and less in commerce. I'm not seeing in these past few months, I'm not seeing as many trans people selling products. I'm seeing trans people sell ideas. The downside of that, the real money for for models, whether you're a spoke spokes model, whatever, the a, a lot of the bigger coins for models come in commerce, come when they're working with fashion campaigns, come when they're working with um 
brands and and corporations um endorsements endorsements exactly i'm curious what do y'all see today and and what shifts have y'all noticed in trans people when it comes to visibility in in media in in general well first and foremost the 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 trendy performative inclusive stuff that people were doing these past five years i would say five years right Um, because it started really it started picking up in 2019 that kind of really being intentional, I thought it was amazing about including trans people in the conversation. And I, we know, we've talked about this before, after gay marriage in two th- passed in 2015, there have been a spotlight that has shown on the little T. It is now a big T. It is what people are using to fundraise. It is what people are using as the litmus test to if you are LGBT inclusive. It's you know, it's no longer, oh, what do you think about gay marriage? Because that's that's a that's what that's an issue water on the bridge. So now they are focused on um the trans thing. And so what we started to see is this uptick, especially with this racial awakening that happened in 2015 with Black Lives Matter. We saw this uptick in visibility of black trans people, people really, really trying to um be inclusive of, of trans people on their platform. So we so we end up, especially people who are visible, we started making money in regards to being on panels. People invited us to schools. People I I, I got to speak at Stanford. Um, people were inviting us to things, but what what we are experiencing now is it's not trending anymore. It's not trendy now, unless it's a part of somebody's politic, which I see some people still doing their politic in the right way with including including trans people. But because it's not trending anymore, and because of this attack on DEI, there is, and even when you brought up Dylan Mul- Mul- Mulvaney, there was a backlash to Bud Light. And so when people are seeing this kind of backlash when they include trans people and not getting the surge of support like they were in the 2019, 2020, 2021, they are now getting backlash because when they are inclusive because of this rise of conservatism and this rise of literally there are people, my money, me getting gigs started to dry up because People are literally getting sued for DEI practices. They're literally getting suing funds and suing. DEI, break break that down for us, Diamond. DEI. DEI is diversity, equity, and inclusion. And what and when you're doing DEI work, it is doing the work to make sure that you are including historically marginalized people within your work, including them in the conversation, including them in how you are paying them equitably, um, at at the very least, equally, (laughs) um, um, and including them. And thinking of inclusion outside of um, gender, outside of race, Think about inclusion, including like disability. Think about inclusion. Think about things like colorism. Like if you are you just having light skinned people on your fucking panels? Are you, you being more inclusive and being more diverse in an equitable way? That's what DEI. But what we are seeing is conservatives actually attacking things in like funds and endowments that are specifically for like black women specifically for especially based on that um that case that affirmative action case that kind of got overturned and blah 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 once that started happening and they started to attack people like even um in San Francisco there is a um a universal income program that they are piloting and they they literally had to stop it because conservative was suing them cuz it was specific for Um, homeless trans people, homeless black trans people. It was specifically for the most marginalizing community. And so they are suing. And this is not the only case. It's multiple cases around the country. It is a part of the conservative strategy to actually attack and sue. And so a lot of them, a lot of them programs are kind of stopping or being really, really covert. So it's stopping people like me, people like other people from actually making money, doing speaking engagements, doing um, social justice work that is funded really, really well because they are attacking when we are actually being specific about our strategy. Mm, well, it's it sounds like I I learned something in just what you said. Even from George George Floyd to now, um, 
marketing campaigns throughout all fields, I've noticed the shift go from inclusion to division. I've been seeing trans campaigns trying to prove our humanity and trying to prove that that we deserve rights versus a few years ago, um, you know, Sports Illustrated is putting a trans model on, on the cover just to show them that trans can be sexy. And, um, and but I'm hearing what you're saying now and I didn't, didn't even consider and I guess that I've grazed past the whole, that whole af affirmative action team. All of this shit is rolling back. They are doing the work in organizing their folks and attacking what they are attacking. And so mm -hmm. it is doing its job while we are kind of arguing about, <laughs> you know, certain things and not actually on the ground in certain areas. I don't want to um, shit on other pe people who are doing the work in, in doing the work, but they're... Because of our politics around our identity, it is something that can be very, very divisive on our on our end. And because of usually they revolve around being white and being Christian, it it gives them a certain togetherness that we can't always share on our side because you know of our identity politics. And I don't think that that's bad. It's just something that we got to work out and make sure that we're not stuck in our in our silos. Mm, that's crazy. I didn't even con conceptualize it like that. Like, you know, I told, and this is why I, I said that I'm the, the least political savvy in this cast because this completely went past me. I'm thinking of it from a social, from a social cycles, from a psychosocial standpoint. And I'm thinking of it from, mm, you know, trans people are becoming more visible online and, um, you know, there people are genuinely starting to see the humanity in us, the humanity so much so that they're realizing, mm, I'm not going to like every one of these transgenders, just like I don't like every cisgender, just like I don't like every woman, just like I don't like every man, person or child. You know what I mean? I think it's a both and and. I think that the more, but you know, statistically, the more, anything that is like, well, anything with like, even with black people, even with, um, um, gays it is when you know more of more of them when you actually are in community with them and you and you have associated it with them outside of whatever kind of stereotypes that caricatures they might be it makes you care about them more and care about the issues more so yeah we are going to be culturally we are shifting in caring more about trans people because they're coming we're being we have more access to their stories that emphasize our humanity instead of the sensationalism of them actually transitioning. We're actually telling trans stories, multiple ones. We mm -hmm. need more, but, you know, we're actually shifting the culture on a, on a cultural level, like through the arts, through film, through TV, like we do in every other aspect. Think about the roots. Think about, you know, the L word. Think about queer folk. They're always, just, it starts in, usually the frontier and change starts in art. It starts in books. Yeah. It starts in film. So yeah. we're doing that for the trans people. But um, but I think it's both. I think it's the political side. And I think it's the um the social right, side. So sure of it all. It's, it's just blowing my mind because I... I I missed that whole um, affirmative action thing. And I think now that you say that, I immediately think that yet again, um, I, I think there are a lot of us who completely did, who are who are completely blindsided and um, and didn't even really catch on and hold on to the whole affirmative action of it all. With the shift in the funding and the money, uh, going from talking about marriage for gay folks who are cis primarily to talking about trans folks, it was real sexy to say you supporting trans people. But these people weren't making these investments. That's been my critique the entire time. Primarily that money went to supporting black trans women and stories about their trauma. It did not go across the board or the non-binary conversation, but often the focus on white folks and folks who were gender non-conforming and non-binary. Right. And kind of centered just those particular stories. That's not to say that's everywhere, but I think that was like it was kind of disproportionate depending on where you live. It might have looked different, but that's what I was seeing, particularly on the West Coast. It looked different when I was in the Midwest. It did look a little bit more equitable, if that's the right word to use, and reflective a little bit more diversity of the community 
in different stuff that was happening locally. Um, but I'll say coming to the West Coast, it definitely was like, no, nah, you look like a cis person as a trans man. So you, you're fine. What I've heard from different from cis people, family members and stuff over the years is like, damn, there ain't no space to fuck up. Right. Like, I feel like I'm on, I got to be on edge when talking about trans shit. Right. There's, you know, speaking to DEI, that's a, that's some new shit. Myself, other people were doing that work before. It was called DEI, got branded as DEI. You need a fucking certifications for DEI and all the random shit. And then the market for DEI, white people got higher more so than black people because they're certified in the training and all that because all that's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like there was like a corporatization that happened on the left. I've talked about it before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that and when we if we're invested in cat, you can't be invested in capitalism. And be like, I don't like racism or homophobia or transphobia because it's all connected. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I feel like there was like capitalism, activism. It just got weird to me. Like the rhetoric, got, like shit got weird for a second, particularly during COVID because the money shifted and there was a lot of money that just was like floating around. But they weren't investing in trans people. They weren't investing in leadership development, making sure people are getting the skills to be the leaders, not just the trans organizations, of all these different type of organizations, of all kinds of different, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's yeah, you wanna you wanna put us on display and say you give a fuck. But that's very different than making the investment in the in, in leadership of trans people and having us be the next strategist, be the, the next, the organizers, leading, you know, the policy nonprofits, leading, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like that, that's where the shit got, it got kind of focused on the rhetoric. And that's why I do that analogy about the hippies in the sixties. It's kind of like you had this rhetoric and a narrative came from white people about the sixties. I don't know if y'all heard it growing up, but I did. It was the summer of love. It's the summer we changed America. We were out in the streets. And so our shit got cold in that shit too right there's a certain narrative with social movements that happens for white middle class pool when it comes to gender you know even with you know black lives matter there are plenty of white people that are going to be like i went to that one protest and i changed america to their fucking kids and they're still you know what i'm saying they're still racist and not invested in any kind of personal change you know uh, when it comes to trans folks same shit where it's like you got a lot of organizations it's like yeah we did a trans thing <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's like what the fuck that got to do with like food clothes and shelter you know what i'm saying and then also for us to just not get got by the internet it's not real we got bots we got trolls and there's a lot of people on there making folks on the fringes sound louder so when you we, we got to a, a, a swell at one point where it was like in the trans community, fuck trans trans people, non-binary people got it worse, and fuck that. It was just like intense rhetoric that didn't even make no motherfucking sense. Excuse my language, right? Uh, fuck black men, all black men suck. You're all misogynists and rapists. I was seeing this shit from people who were so-called leaders. You know what I'm saying? Or bots that try to make it seem like they were leaders and gave a fuck about the black community. And so it's like they're def that definitely happened, and I think it fucks some shit up. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think I, I don't. I'm, not, I'm saying, in addition to all the other things, I, that's definitely a factor in the divide and conquer shit that's happening online with these troll farms and bots and shit to be divisive. That's why. It, that's why I said, like, I'm okay with talking to people, black other black people about trans shit, because fuck that. Internet, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want you to learn from fucking internet. Well, you can talk to me. Not every, you're not saying you gotta be an asshole. Or, you know, everybody's got their capacity, but um, I don't know. But shit just got weird. And I, and I think it, it changed the tone. I think that we are also, we as an entity, as Marsha's Play, are a case study as well. Because, you know, while people have come to us to put us on display, we have done live shows. We have done, you know, different events. We have done, we have brought, they have brought us to certain places um brought me to certain to, to certain places while they because of the gift of gab being able to tell the story being able to contextualize so yes there has been things that people have brought me to the to be a part of but they haven't underwritten the podcast they haven't actually give us oh, anything, speak <laughs> they haven't give us it, it, an investment that that 
makes us be able to grow what we do. They haven't actually done, you know, foundational work to keep us going. You know, other, we are supported by our listeners, by our patrons, but we, I'm talking about these big organizations that can actually, you know, that can take, you know, give us a budget every year to be able to do the work that we do. P- that nobody has ever done that. You get what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. So we are a case study in that. And because we started in 2017. And so, yes, we have gotten, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have gotten opportunities to put us mm-hmm. on play as trans people, but to right. actually make us a business and grow us as a business and grow us as an entity, as a um, journalistic in- entity, um, that supports trans people. Pe- nobody invested in that way. So I think you're totally, totally on the right track when you when you think about that. Even using us as a case study, because you know I I, I said this about visibility and trans visibility on trans transgender day of visibility. <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I said this visibility is cute. It's awareness wow. is cute, but if it stops there, it's just cute. If, if you're not actually doing something to help us Ugh. tangibly survive, then you're not actually doing anything. You just kind of using us. And it's usually putting us on display just to make you look like mm-hmm. <laughs> you are woke or you are, yeah. um, you are in the know and you are progressive. It is, you're not actually doing. And oftentimes asking us to talk about our traumas too. It's like, girl, so you want me to come in here and talk a little bit about some trauma too? And you're not gonna make this investment? Come yeah. on, get out of here. It's, a, it's a, that those type of investments. <laughs> you know, but you're still sending like I think about the big organizations <laughs> that is still sending their coins to the different banks and different um Come on now. To to, to the banks and to like, you know, different you political know, parties, honey, politicians. Not just political parties. I'm talking about like money making entities. Like this, I'm, I'm gonna put uh-huh. I'm gonna put this much of my money of my nonprofit money in this fund in order to be able to make it grow and make it and make sure that we're endowed for da 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 da. But you're not actually investing in the people. You're mm-hmm. just making this. You're just kind of hoarding money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so I see that a lot. I see a lot of hoarding money, and I see a lot of people kind of. Um, playing those same kind of corporate, same kind of um, capitalistic games, but you're not actually doing the job of taking the resources and putting in it in the hands of the people. And so that's mm. fucking shitty. And we are a case study of that. I just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't like to put money Ooh, in fuck our hands. They don't like to put money <laughs> in our hands. And whenever we ask for it or demand it, then we're begging, honey. But I want I want to say, honey, pay your activists, pay your activists, activists need to be paid. Y'all want to why Rudy caught y'all want to why Ruby ran off to Argentina with all that money. Pay y'all activists. Pay your act No, I'm just joking, but but did not I not joking? <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the fucking truth. Oh no, I was I was joking about Ruby, but but that is the truth, but but we'll just say allegedly. Um, she hasn't been convicted <laughs> yet. Um, but no, um, and, and it is crazy because there are a lot of a lot of voices that that get suppressed. I mean, there are a lot of voices that get supported. There are a lot of people who get investments and get funding, but even mm. that in a lot of ways is hoarding because we seen this we see the same type of people and the same types of voices and literally motherfuckers looking like twins and repeating each other are are the ones who get the funding and get the investment, which really isn't a true investment in anything other than supporting the status quo. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, even, even in Jay mentioning the box and, and all of that on social media, something else we have to realize too with social media is that we follow controlled algorithms, you Mm -hmm. know, if you've ever been on YouTube and you see this random content creator pop up and they only got 50 views and then you go back six months later and they got a following of, of 500,000, you know, and, and they make videos that you're like, why the fuck is this popular? You know, you get on TikTok <laughs> and you follow nothing and support nothing but black content creators. And all of a sudden on your FYP, you know, you getting a bunch of Caucasian Americans. What the fuck is going on? These are controlled algorithms. These entities such as Meta, such as 
uh, TikTok, such as all of them, they have not only admitted to the fact that they can and do control our out our algorithms and they can and do control what we see and they can and do control what goes viral they've been taken to court for it for discrimination i know tiktok specifically since i've been a tiktok creator but ultimately in this conversation um i've been so quiet because this has been a learning experience for me you know i'm still learning a lot from you jay i'm still learning a lot from you diamond but ultimately what i'm hearing is that we need to invest in trans people I want y'all to tell us, I want y'all to let me know, have you noticed a difference? Have you noticed a shift in trans people in the media? And if so, share that with me. Let me know what you've seen and, and let me know why you think it is. Honey, and you can even let me know if you don't agree with nothing that none of the hell of us, is, none of us is saying, huh? Either way, when you inform us, when you let us know, hashtag Marsha's Plate. That's hashtag M-A-R-S-H-A-S-P-L-A-T-E. As y'all know, we're into whatever 170-something days of this uh, massacre, this genocidal situation happening over in Gaza. Definitely keeping people in prayer or lifted, lifted however you know, people get down. To keep them lifted uh i know it was a big deal yesterday with uh this weekend with the easter holiday um you know because there's folks getting bombed <laughs> you know what i'm saying because because people think oh guys are palestinians there's palestinian christians palestinian muslims palestinians atheists Palestin you know what i'm saying uh it is the holy land palestinian jewish folks so like it's a lot of people with different religions getting bombed right now in gaza like let's be clear um not as if that should you know Anyway, have any uh, say on, on their humanity. Anyway, Smith College, um, they, over in New Hampshire, the students there have been, excuse me, in Massachusetts, have entered their sixth day of occupying an administrative building. They're calling for the school to divest from weapons manufacturers because they don't want them to be supporting these weapons to be, you know, supporting these weapons to be used by the U.S. to be... Uh, given to Israel to support this genocide. Um, they're a part of a larger network of folks organizing around this U.S. campaign for Palestinian rights. And also they're specifically with Students for Justice Palestine. And uh, recently the Biden administration, shout out for the positive things, call you out for the fucked up things authorized billion, about $4 billion in new bombs and fighter jets for Israel, according to the Washington Post. 2,000 pound bombs, five, five, uh, five, th 500, uh, anyway, they authorized some more fucking bombs and fighter jets that they're going to send to Israel with our tax dollars. So that's why these students are protesting because they don't want the money, their tuition or anything to, to be a part of this. Anyway, so there's this larger campaign to divest um, and for us to spend our money, tax dollars differently. So they had this collective vision to fund care, not killing. Um, and one part of it is around um, investing or divesting rather from um, supporting this war. So, yeah, they have this U.S. military funding to Israel map, which is really interesting. Um, and uh, my question for you two in the audience is, how would you invest, reinvest this money or divest this money from this war and supporting this genocide and supporting all this killing, this $3.8 billion um, every year that we give um, and also this new money that just got approved? How would you spend it? Um, how would you reinvest it? Um, what's cool about this, uh, this, this tool is it says in the U.S., $3.8 trillion goes to Israel's, uh, for weapons. Instead, that could, um, house 450, 100,000 people over, over 450,000 people with public housing for a year. Uh, it could give over 1.3 million children receiving free or low uh, cost health care. Um, it could fund for 41,000, over 41,000 new elementary school teachers. Um, 
it could help over 100,000 students uh, cancel their student loan debt instead of paying for bonds. Um, and you can even put in your state. So I'm going to put in, um, I'll put in Maryland, I'll put in all of our states. So I'm going to put in Texas, I'll put in uh, uh, Maryland first. So Maryland spends over $79 billion. Billion? That sounds high. Billion. No, a million, million, million. 79, my bad, $79 million goes towards Israel's weapons. And instead, it could fund over 9,000 households with public housing for a year. It could provide over 27,000 children with free or low cost health care and also increase your teacher, your elementary school teachers by over 800 and cancel over 2,000 students uh, loan debt. I'm going to put in Texas real quick. It says for Texas, Texas <laughs> has over $298 million that goes towards, I mean, it's a big ass state. <laughs> towards Israel's weapons. And instead, it could fund over 35,000 households with public housing for a year. It also could provide over 800,000, nearly 850, 100,000 households with solar electricity produced for a year. Um, and could cancel over 7,000, uh, nearly 8,000 students with their student loan debt. And then for Washington State, Washington's uh, spends over one hundred and eighteen hundred uh, a million uh, towards Israel's weapons, and instead it could fund over fourteen thousand folks with households for public housing. And this place in Washington State has like a housing crisis, 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 crisis. So that's a big deal. Um, over four forty thousand kids could get free or low cost health care, and over three thousand students could get their uh, student loan debt canceled. My question for you. And for the audience is, how would you spend that money? It's crazy. I I know what I would do with the money, and it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have went to Israel. It would have it would have went to the it went to um inf infrastructure. Um, it it would have went to work actually working on these bridges that we have over here instead of them lying and saying that they working on the bridges. Um, it would go to the solar electricity initiatives, it would go toward um, counseling people's student loan debts or giving them um, leeway on their student loan debts, cutting some of their stu student loan debts. It would have went anywhere except Israel. It would have, to me, this is, this is so irritating because it's like, girl, really? Like y'all over here crying about people getting motherfucking welfare. Well, honey, it's more money being used to fund wars that we're not even supposed to be fighting in. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. are y'all yeah. nuts? Like, wake the fuck up. This is why they keep distracting y'all with transgender people and our issues that don't even affect y'all fucking lives. Y'all don't y'all don't want to address the real tea, and the real tea is always right in your motherfucking face, honey. Hey, they, still, they still oh, committing God. genocide in Africa too, baby. Good thing is we'll have links to uh, uh, where you can uh, email Congress around ending genocide and you can call your congressional representatives around this as well. Because Congress, the House of Representatives, is the only body that can designate funds. They're the only body that can appropriate money. It's not the president and it's not the Senate. It's only Congress. So we'll have for on the federal level. So we'll have that link for you because that's the thing about voting. All you do when you vote is you decide who gets to do what with your money, period. And what happens in between is when you take the phone or you go online and you call them and hold them accountable because they know your ass going to vote in November. That's so how you have that. control. So repeat that for me, Jay. You said that our Congress people are the ones who are in control with where our money goes, our tax dollars go. So on the federal level, it's only the House of Representatives, Congress, right? That that branch of government that is in, in control of, they call it appropriation or appropriating money. So that means they are the only body that can spend the money. It can decide where it goes. So all the president can do is sign or veto. The president does not get to make a budget about the United States of America ever. Only thing the president can do is sign. And the only thing that the Senate can do is co-sign or they have a, a committee, a reconciliation, and they kind of change the bill and edit it. 
but it's still that bill that starts in the house of see, representatives. Now you're going, see, now you're going too far from me, Jack. See, um, <laughs> but got, they're, got they're the main body and everybody else just co-signed huh? or edited. Got you, got you. And it's funny that it's called appropriation because they always misappropriating the goddamn something <laughs> like, like they doing mm -hmm. now. Honey sending um bombs and missiles and shit to motherfucking Israel and these big fucking dummies. What if they do something or say something to piss Israel the fuck off, like letting the transgenders live, honey, and then they use that shit on y'all so fucking but look, but look, real quick before you go down before you respond to. I want to shout out to Wisconsin to my people because this is a good example of holding these people accountable and putting them in check. Folks in Wisconsin came out and turned out to vote when they had an election for the state Supreme Court. Now, the old state Supreme Court had Wisconsin with the most gerrymandered maps in the entire United States. Gerrymandered means that you get to kind of cookie cutter your districts for your house or your, you know, your seats. That way you don't have no competition when you run for election. Right. Because you don't you don't got to run against nobody. You made it a perfect box or a perfect little star or whatever. But because folks came out and voted and got this person on the Supreme Court, the court overturned those maps. So now they actually have a fair chance at the state legislature. They have a fairer chance at, you know, folks running for Congress. They have a fair chance. So the people, the people have the power. Right. We have the power. They just don't want us to use it. And that's how we hold these people that get to control, spend our money that could go to this other shit. But Diamond, how would you spend the money? What would you do? Ooh, I am always about having a roof over my head. And I, I think that that is important for survival of people. They need to have shelter. And mm -hmm. so when it comes to affordable housing, when it comes to um, free housing, when it comes to anything that puts families in homes i want i'm always going to spend my money on that i want to spend the money on that also i'm all about you got to eat any basic needs like you know yeah giving making sure people have enough meals for their children enough, enough food for people while they're at school and all that kind of stuff so food housing food and education i want people to be able to get educated i want people to be able to have access to education and access to follow their dreams because we were talking about trans people and and paying people and activism i think trans people can be more than activists i think they can be more and if they are invested in not just trans people but everybody for real for real but because it's a trans show i want to talk about my community if we you if you invest in the education of people they can go out here and do some amazing work in fields that are not activism in fields that we exactly do so many amazing things because some people don't want to be activists and so i feel like everybody should have the opportunity look at what's happening in other countries who actually have health care who actually have access to education like it's just it's just a better way of life and so um i would invest in education um housing and um any kind of eliminating food deserts <laughs> so that's what I would do. But everything y'all said I think is amazing. I don't even need to go in super deep in, in regards to that. But I what I love, what I want to point out is the young folks is not having it. The young I love that the exactly. young people are fucking when they even like when next Benedict got um got um murdered or however they want to spin it, um the the students was like, no, fuck that. We about to Lead this fucking school and protest and da da. Period. Are gonna be all right. I love when that they were shooting in Parkland and the kids was going off. I, I mean, these kids are kind of like they're kind of like latchkey kids a little bit too, like that kind of era. The way that I they're coming up, what they got going on, they don't mind going to the streets because I feel, I feel like shit went through a lot. Of shit. The lesson, the most powerful lesson that I learned from COVID, that mm. I felt is when you stop this machine they will do whatever it takes to, right. fucking, to get shit rolling again yeah. and that covid stopping the world may motherfuckers get on their shit and start changing stuff and mm. so uh and uh, unfortunately we kind of going back to normal but at least it showed and we've seen this in other um countries where you know, in France and Amsterdam, in different and other places where 
fucking all the motherfucking workers strike and stop and stop the fucking country from going, they start making shifts and changes. And I wish, I really, really wish that um, whatever needs to happen to organize, to make a shift like that, I really want it to happen. I feel, I feel like the young kids is going to do it. So I'm proud of them. Oh yeah, heck yeah! You know, it's it, you. It's inter- interesting what you said about COVID. What made COVID possible is that the Democrats had control over the House of Representatives over Congress, so they were in charge of appropriating money. Because if it was left up to the Republicans, we'd have been shit out of luck. And what we did receive was compromise money because they wanted to provide more support for us. So I think that even speaks to you know like. All this shit. But yeah, let us know uh how you would spend this money. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh definitely check out the petition. Check out the um check out the petition. You can either call your representative or you can email your representative and you can let them also know how you would like to spend this money instead of spending this money <laughs> on this genocide and this, you know, supporting this Western Euro, whatever weird colonial shit in the Middle East, slash North Africa, because Middle East is made up. But let us know. Hit us up. <laughs> Talk to the people and shit. Uh, hashtag Marsh Play. <laughs> gimme, gimme, gimme euphoria. More than peace of mind. It's the joy and space to change the tide. Gimme, gimme, gimme euphoria. More than peace of mind. It's the joy and space to change the tide. Gimme, gimme, gimme. And the high can never come down from whoa, 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 whoa. So what is bringing y'all euphoria this week? Oh, I'll go first this week because I actually got one, honey. Yes, honey, praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. What has given me euphoria this week, honey? Yeah. Maddie in the morning, Maddie in the morning, Maddie in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> To all of my people out there in Grindr, Snapchat, BBC, <laughs> Scruff, honey, yes, honey. And for all of my girls who know Fag Talk, it's 99J. It's 99J. Yes, honey, Mad- T.S. Madison, her uh, new show, um, Fag Talk. I don't know if I should be promoting them or not because they, they might end up becoming competition. Her and Craig <laughs> talk about coming into the podcast space. Honey, but no, I will always um big up my sis my sister Maddie. Um yes, I just I I love her trans representation. No, I don't agree with everything she says. No, I wouldn't do everything that she does. No, I haven't done everything that she's done, but I love the fact that she is a multimedia personality, honey. Um I, I love the fact that she represents black trans plus size femme um over 35 um and yeah i don't always agree with what jay and diamond say neither but honey i love and i respect and i promote their right to say it and i promote their their voices and i'm always willing to have the conversation when, when but i say all that just to say that I think that I'm officially one of the Maddie Mob. I, I think that I'm officially <laughs> one of the Maddie Mob. I feel like, shout out to T.S. Madison again, I feel like um, she is best when she has somebody to bounce off of that she has great chemistry with. And um, I was truly introduced to her uh, from a media space, from an entertainer space with uh, her and Kaya. And I was scared that she wouldn't be able to find that magic again. But I think not only has she found magic again, but it's it's elevated and it's more educational. And um, I love her collaborations with with Craig and I love Fag Talk. And yeah, that, that's been my euphoria for the week. OK, my euphoria this week. Uh, there's two. There's two. One, it began. Um, it was very black, very queer, very, you know. A little bit trans, not as trans as I wanted it to be, but it was very black and queer. <laughs> Sunday was 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 trans, that's what some community. Uh but yeah, they had a, a event this weekend. They had a game night for uh, Black Pride and this other organization, Brother to Brother. But it was, you know, it was a mixed crowd, but it was cute. 
we had the grown folks play big whisk over there. I played spades and stayed in my lane. They had people playing dominoes. <laughs> they had people playing, you know, it was just real chill. I had some good food, mac and cheese and all that kind of stuff. And then Sunday, you know, I mentioned the, uh, the church that I go to um, after service, they had a gathering. And, you know, we ate down. People cooked out. Um, again, more mac and cheese, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they had greens. They were like, look, look. Look, you know, down the swine, you know, fuck the pig. These greens are not for you. We use ham hocks. We ain't fucking around. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't have no greens, but it was all good. Uh, the food was delicious. Um, it, it's always good to have a good type meal, um, especially being far away from home. You know what I'm saying? So that was great. And then, y'all, the other euphoria, my net, one of my nephews, he just actually. Yeah, I think he's the last nephew to turn 18. He just turned 18, y'all. He's a grown up and I got to connect with him. Cause we don't really, you know, he a teenager, so he don't really talk, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I sent him a text and I was like, you know, how you doing? And I sent him this little, uh, a little piece in the text from, um, this dead prayer song called learning, growing, and changing. And it says, the more, you know, the more, you know, you don't know. And if you don't know, there's more you can know then you won't grow, you know, and it, along with some other stuff, little things, you know, and just like, uh, 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 getting grown podcast on there. Uh, they used to say often uh, the currency of adulting is adaptability. So I sent that to him too, right in the text. Some you know just little blurs. He goes, "Thanks, Unc." <laughs> it's yeah. some other stuff. It was just so cute to just have that moment. That brought me so much joy. And he's like, you know, he was like, you know, I do a little poetry too. And I was like, oh, you do poetry? Send me your stuff. You know, so that brought me so much joy just to like share that moment with him. You know what I mean? Because like I said, we, I don't get to see my family as frequently being so far away. And uh, yeah, it was it was really special. So that's bringing me euphoria this week. What about you, Diamond? Yeah. I have been like finding some cute little art pieces. And so this is one of the art pieces that I found and I freaking love it. Ooh. Oh, that is gorgeous. So fucking cute. Yeah. I love this thing. She is so cute. She looks sickening. And yeah. I can't wait. I put her in my um in my room. She's gonna be in my room because I got a couple of things that I love mm. uh, in my room. I just think she's so pretty. So this is one. <laughs> For all who can't see, let me break it down, honey. Yeah. It, it is a Nubian goddess, honey, yeah. with her sunglass, her wrap on her head, her jewels, her bejeweled finger, honey, her a little blue her and red neck, a honey, bird. Her, her crown. Oh Lord, and she has a, a mask. necklace. What yeah. is that? A sarong? What is that? A tunic? What is that? A dashika? <laughs> not a dashika. <laughs> I'm kicking y'all. Y'all not be kicking, but no, she she mm. looks gorgeous. Um, yeah, that in this this red and blue with this zebra print background. Um, and she has a beautiful, um, dark, deep mahogany skin tone. Yeah, I love her. She you is. better describe it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on. So I love her, and so y'all will be seeing this next piece in a photo shoot because this is a headdress that I found that I freaking love. Oh, Diamond, Ooh. that is everything. It gives it Ooh. gives me uh. it gives me native uh. goddess vibes on you. Yeah. It gives me like the twenties or something, like the was it the thirties or something? Like you gonna come down one of them staircases? I don't know what it gives, but it gives me sickening. I live for it. I can't wait to do a photo shoot in it, and you know it can be give you fan. It can give you so oh, much. Oh, okay. Turn around. Of this, it is my sickening. Ooh, diamond. You know what it's giving? Remember them chairs that everybody used to have back in the day? Go ahead and talk about them. Yeah. Them thatcher chairs, the, the them, uh, chairs. The, yeah, the wicker chairs. Go ahead and clock out. Like, yeah. You can go ahead and clock out, Jay. To me, it definitely gave like native goddess, you know, um, the two spirit us two spirited, non conforming, gender as Is that Kari Shell? Yes, it's Kari Shell. Oh, wow. Yeah, so fucking cute. That's what I was yeah. getting into. It looked like it, it was feathers. It looked like there is. You know, some some wicker, some some sticks, and um, those shells. Yeah, it's giving me like native goddess ceremony tea. Yes, I love wow. it. these things. I I found and I love them. Oh, yeah. yeah, they have been giving me joy. Just things that I I creative ideas that I want to do with them. So y'all will see them soon. And that's okay, it. okay. 
okay, okay. Okay, okay, honey. So thank y'all for listening. Let us know what has been bringing y'all euphoria this week. And we will see y'all next week. Hashtag Marsha's Blake, too. And thank you for supporting us. We love y'all. Yes, we love y'all. All right. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Bye. Glad y'all can hear me this week. Peace. <laughs> well, that's it. Thank you for coming and getting a taste of Marsha's Plate. You can listen to us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Make sure you leave a review because we really need those five stars, y'all. And go like our Facebook page and leave some comments. We will be posting exclusive content every Thursday, so you definitely don't want to miss out. You can also follow us on Twitter and any other social media site at Marsha's Plate. If you'd like to donate or advertise with us, hit us up at diamondstyles at gmail.com. That's diamond, S-T-Y-L-Z, at gmail.com. And that's it for us, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. You going to say bye, Mia? Oh, bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, every little thing's going to be all right. Oh, don't you 